Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamerTid.com video, we finally have some solid rumours when the next generation GeForce graphics card will come out. And why do I say solid? Because they're from NVIDIA themselves. And that's right, that Hot Chips 30, which is around 80 days from now, Scott Uberman will be giving a discussion on the next generation GeForce graphics cards. Finally! So what does that mean? Well, in short, we should at the very least have a hint when the launch of these cards should be. Now, whether it's going to take place prior to that, which a lot of the uh, rumours uh, that we've seen thus far have hinted that we will indeed be seeing a launch in June, July time with the uh, you know Founders Edition cards, and then after that we'll see the custom AIBs come out uh, from MSI and ASUS or whomever else, and of course they're going to put their own spin on it with their own coolers or whatever else, and hopefully by that point prices will be somewhat stable in the market, but we'll get to that. Well, either way, it looks good. So hopefully by the third to possibly fourth quarter, we should see these cards on store shelves without too much of a question. Of course, there are numerous things that still unanswered. For one, what architecture is this going to be based on? So without any question, the Pascal architecture has been around for a number of years now. It's, it's basically two years old that we saw the launch of the, he says, reaching for it, the GTX 1080. Yeah, that's right, this, this thing has been out on the market now for two years, which is quite a long time in graphics card terms. That's not to say that it's the longest we've seen uh, GPUs um, from NVIDIA uh, kind of doing their thing. For example, Kepler, well, that was around for quite a long time as well. And it's, you know, we saw a couple of generations of that, but even so, we also, of course, saw Tesla, which first arrived the G80s. These were NVIDIA's first unified graphics card architecture GPUs, and they were very important to NVIDIA, and they launched in the GeForce 8000 series, and then, of course, they were the 9000 series, and then the 200 series, so it certainly did go around the block as well. In other words, it's not unprecedented for us to have one architecture for so long, but typically there's some kind of refresh or tweak to the architecture in the meanwhile. So uh, later on in the video, we're going to be analysing why it's been on the market for so long, because there are numerous reasons for that. But we'll also go into uh, right now possibly what we're going to be seeing. So in my mind, there are several different alternative options. The first of which, of course, is a very simple one, a refresh of Pascal. This could be built on a better process. It could be just with higher clock speeds, possibly with the introduction of GDDR6. So in other words, higher memory speeds. It would, of course, possibly uh, increase the number of CUDA cores or whatever else. But essentially, the architecture may but will be very similar, just with a few tweaks here or there, perhaps, you know, a few tweaks to the number of CUDA cores, uh, possibly improvements to cache, or whatever else NVIDIA feels is appropriate. And then there are those two persistent rumours, Ampere and Turing. The industry seems to go back and forward all of the time of which of those two is actually genuine or not, and honestly, it doesn't really matter. It could honestly be called, you know, uh, maple. It could be called... It could be called brick. It's irrelevant because neither one of these two actually give us that much indication of exactly what is a consisting inside the GPU, the actual specification difference. For example, a lot of folks have also said about Volta. Possibly we could see a variant of Volta for the next mainstream GPU. And it's arguable, let's just take Turing, for example, that Turing and Volta are very similar to each other architecturally. The only difference is that uh, some of the stuff which is meant for HPC or computer orientated functionality has simply been ripped away. And therefore, that's the GPU that we have, and instead it's me meant primarily for gaming. It also could be a good idea for NVIDIA if perhaps they want to curtail mining a little bit on mainstream GPUs, although I'm somewhat dubious that that may be the case, but who the heck knows at this point. The only rumour that does seem to be fairly solid and consistent when it comes to the performance of these graphics cards or the changes in these graphics cards is the fact that it will have GDDR6. We've, say, we've seen SK Hinux which have pretty much gone on record and said, yeah, we are actually providing that memory for these graphics cards. There are a lot of other things we've seen, such as uh, GPU-Z 
um, sorry, take power up database entries, which of course go into like the supposed specifications of the card and whatever else. But being honest with you, they're just placeholders from leaks that have already happened. And if you want to put stock in those leaks, then by all means, you can possibly say, well, this is the specifications, but I'm somewhat dubious of them. The one thing I will say, however, is performance is one of two options. If it's a refresh, well, your guess is as good as mine because technically a refresh could have 20 megahertz addition on the core with everything else being identical. On the other hand, a refresh could also be an addition of like 50% additional CUDA cores, which would obviously be astronomical improvement in performance. If it's a new architecture, for example, as we saw from Maxwell to Pascal, well, things are a little more open-ended there and I'm inclined to think that there's going to be a larger performance uptick. If I had to give some guesses, I mean, all you have to do is look at one generation from another generation on video typically. For example, if you were to take a look at the, let's say, the 780 Ti versus the, uh, or the 780 versus the 980, or you can look at the 1070 versus the previous edition's uh, Titan. The GTX 1070, for example, from Pascal would certainly uh, be about even, or sometimes slightly slower, sometimes slightly faster than the uh, Maxwell uh, Titan cards, which I suspect that's going to be a very typical thing we see from NVIDIA. They, people are going to be very upset, at least in my opinion, if you only get a very small performance increase. But, and this leads us to some questions, why has it taken NVIDIA so long to launch these cards? Well, there are a lot of theories that folks have out there, and ultimately I do not work at NVIDIA's headquarters. Sure, I've interviewed a couple of people from NVIDIA, but I can't ask them this because they're just gonna look at me like I've gone crazy because they're not gonna answer the question. Ultimately, there are a couple of different scenarios. The first is the fact that currently NVIDIA have an awful lot of market share. They've got about 70% of the discrete market share. In other words, they're not pressured to actually release a new card. They can essentially release one when they're good and ready, which makes sense. I mean, why have Intel suddenly gone absolutely militant with the Coffee Lake series of processors? So the reason they stepped up the release date for the 300 series, it was because, well, suddenly Ryzen came out and they were like, oh, okay. We might want to take this kind of seriously. After all, originally the rumors were that, and uh, AMD actually kind of hinted that we would see 40% improvement in IPC compared to their previous generation. A lot of folks were just like, yeah, maybe. Uh, it turns out that that was actually not even true. It was more like 50, 52%, something like that, over the previous generation. That is insane. That is IPC gains. That is nuts. And so obviously Intel had to counter that. If you look at the GPU market, however, you've got the 570 and the 580, which pretty much are around the speed of, let's say, the GTX 1060. And then you've got the Vega 56 and the 64. First of all, there's a massive price disparity between the 580 and that's even, let's say, the Vega 56. And a lot of folks just can't plunk down that amount of money for the Vega 56, let alone the 64s which means that NVIDIA have an awful lot of leeway there. It can release an awful lot of cards in between that space. This also means it's a bit puzzling from my point of view from AMD. I, I don't understand why they didn't release some cut down variant of either Vega or just a version of Polaris that had, let's say, 44 compute units. That would make an awful lot of sense in market terms. The other thing that is unquestionable when it comes to uh, NVIDIA is that they are also subject to the uh, market pricing. Now, fortunately, miners have somewhat held off recently on buying new graphics cards, but if you were to take a look at cards even a couple of months ago, they were just absolutely nuts pricing. Fortunately, they are coming down more closer to MSRP, which is obviously a good thing for us, but that also could be a factor for gamers as well. One of the most common questions I get, not just from uh, audience, but also from friends is, uh, hey, you know when the new graphics cards are coming out? And I'm just like, uh, at this point, possibly given the rumors. And I'm like, okay, well, should I buy this card? Uh, I don't know, like, you want to buy the card? Well, yeah, but I'm worried about the next generation. And of course, when those questions pop up, it's like, well, that's a question only you can answer. 
if you feel that let's for sake of argument you have the cash to buy a gtx 1070 does the 1070 do what you need with that level of pricing and a lot of people would say mm, yeah but i would like some extra leeway in which case if you can't increase your budget your only option is either to take the hit and just say well the 1070 will have to do or to wait until the next generation but this is not the case anymore because I think a lot of people have waited so long for these cards, they no longer feel it's imperative to just rush out and buy something. Most people have gotten to the point where they're fairly happy with their setup. Obviously there are some you know, people who are upgrading now or just getting into PC gaming, but generally speaking, it's like, yeah, as a gamer, you're probably holding off now and Nvidia are probably aware of that and realizing that the market is kind of demanding that the new cards do actually come out at some point in the not too distant future. They probably realize that and who knows, maybe they feel they've got these little industry insiders themselves that are telling them that AMD are readying something big. We don't know that for certain. And also with the price fixing from alleged, actually, I don't want to get in trouble, alleged price fixing from DRAM companies, which essentially said, according to allegations, that DRAM companies have conspired to essentially reduce the uh, shipments of DRAM that they've all produced. And this, of course, has the rather obvious result. It increases RAM prices. And, you know, NVIDIA don't produce RAM. They have to purchase it. So they're a customer here and they have to purchase the memory. And this also might go into GDDR6 as well. Ultimately speaking, GDDR6 hasn't been ripe for the market yet and they obviously need the yields to be good. They can't purchase GDDR6 if the yields are paltry because if they did, the prices would be even higher, which obviously would then come to the customer. Another possibility, and this one is pure speculation on my part, it's possible NVIDIA just felt that they needed more time to cook the egg. They felt that the actual ecosystem or the architecture just needed more time. Possibly there were some errors in the actual GPU architecture, so they needed to go back to the drawing board. I'm somewhat dubious about that. But it's also possible that they were waiting for ray tracing, waiting for that technology to become established and figuring out exactly how interested developers were. After all, Developers knew about it before we knew about it, and NVIDIA talked to developers, they talked to companies such as Microsoft, but they also talked to, of course, Epic Games and all of these guys to get an understanding of what do you need in the next generation of GPUs. It's possible, therefore, that the next generation of GeForce, even if it is a Pascal refresh, may actually have something which would accelerate ray tracing on the GPU. But that's not me with insider information, that's purely speculation. And I use that purely on the fact that NVIDIA have made a really big thing of, of course, ray tracing on Volta. So with Volta, it uses tensor cores, so possibly they've, I don't know, stripped down the, the production costs of that, possibly reduced the number of tensor cores in the GPU or played around with it, or done something entirely different to get that level of performance. I don't think that ray tracing on the next generation of GeForce, even if it is uh, with you know hardware accelerated, I don't think it's going to be like where every game suddenly becomes full ray tracing. There's still, of course, going to be traditional rasterization and rendering techniques employed, but still. So what's my advice to you? Well, ultimately, it comes down to you and your desire to figure out what you want in the graphics card. Uh, I would personally suggest right now that if you are running with a good graphics card and you don't need to upgrade, then, you know, hold off. If, on the other hand, you've got a kind of a smaller budget anyway, being honest with you, the GTX, I don't know what it's going to be called, 2060, 2050, or whatever it's going to be called, is not going to release uh, immediately. You're going to have the high-end SKUs, so... You know, this is going typically how we've seen every launch ever. You've got the uh, 1080s and 1070s launch essentially identical times. And then, you know, after the following months, you, you see the 1060s and the 1050s and the, and the TIs and all the ties, whatever you want to call them. And eventually, of course, the product line, lineup gets filled. And I'm not surprised, to be honest, and this is my closing thought, that we did not see GTC Taiwan bear any fruit when it comes to an, an actual announcement. There's a couple of reasons for that. 
Nvidia are still releasing uh, new Pascal cards. We've of course now just seen the free Gigabyte 1060 come out. And on top of that, there's just not been enough murmurs yet. There's not been enough rumors, enough speculation from NVIDIA themselves. And typically they do hint things. Remember the whole power of 10 thing from the GeForce uh, 10 graphics cards? Yeah. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.